I want you to catch this one in the air, okay? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> What's going on guys? Jacob Orth back here with another video of Jacob's Life in Vegas, bringing you guys a video I told you I was going to bring you about interviewing politicians here in the state of Nevada running for office. And today I have one that some of you might be familiar with. This folks, Mr. Ryan Bundy. He is running for governor here in the state of Nevada. So I wanted to get him on camera. He agreed to the interview. He was nice enough to even let me come out to the ranch here. So we're going to go explore the ranch a little bit while we're out here. But uh, Mr. Bundy, you are running for governor for the first time right here in the state of Nevada. That is correct. Yes. Thank you, Jacob. So I'm uh, here and going to do all that I can to help protect Nevada and make sure that it's recognized as a sovereign state and that the people of Nevada enjoy the, all the rights and privileges that they should be able to enjoy. Awesome. Now, your family's been in Nevada for a long time. Your family's been actually on this ranch for over 100 years, correct? 141 this year, yes. Jeez. Okay, <laughs> that's quite a while. So the ranching style has been in your family for quite some time. I mean, you, I mean, your family was here, you know, way before even Vegas was what it is today, before Vegas was even uh, thought as a city. Yep. Yeah. My pioneer ancestors moved uh, to the Bunkerville area in January 7th, 1877. So Jeez. That's the date. So you're 13 years after Nevada became a state. Yes. So, wow. Okay. So you've been been around for quite some time. And uh, let's go around, the guys. We're going to walk around some other parts of the ranch. I want you guys to see some of this. And we're going to uh, get to some of the reasons why Mr. Bundy here decided to run for governor. I think we uh, <laughs> maybe go over here by the hay. We can see the cows in the background. I think that'll be kind of cool. All right. You can do one with the horses, too. Maybe. Yep. We got horses. We got. We have a four-legged friends following us around yeah he, he likes to chase that stick so he's just waiting for us to throw it all right guys so now we're hanging out we got the uh, cows behind us here on the property so you know mr. bunny tell us you know what made you want to go ahead and run for governor as Nevada well you know most of it has to do with um, seeing how the state has been treated in the Union since its um, inception since Nevada was made a state in October 31st, uh, 1864, it's never been treated as a sovereign state. It's never been treated as an equal state to the original 13 states. And, and there's a problem in that. You know, our founding fathers discussed the treatment of new states entering the Union, and they discussed whether a new state should or should not be equal to the original 13 states. They wanted to make sure that the new states did not become greater than the original 13. But the, the conclusion was that if new states entering the Union were not equal to the original 13, then they would either not join the Union or they would quickly revolt from it. Well, Nevada nor any of the other western states um, have been treated as equal states. And that is creating problems. In Nevada particularly, uh, Nevada is not in control of its land and its resources, and, and technically Nevada is only about a 10% of the state that it believes it is. And so the, the federal government is treating Nevada as a territory, and different rules apply for a territory versus a state. And so that's one of the major reasons. The other major reason I'm running for, for governor is because I have personally experienced and witnessed others being terribly treated in the judicial system, where people are being accused of and tried for crimes that they have not committed, or they are being punished in, in cruel ways, and the judicial system is using lies and manipulations to accomplish their convictions, and so the justice system is not being, is not fair. Uh, and many rights that belong to the people are being violated. This has to stop. And so as I don't see any of the other candidates lining up to be able to fix these problems, and so I feel that it falls upon me to do so. This one here's got a little uh, lather worked up on him. Come on out here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, now we're truly here with the horses all around us. They want to be in the shot, too, and get some love. So next question, <laughs> Mr. Bundy, want to ask you, you know, obviously you running, you know, you've got some stiff competition <laughs> with some of these other candidates. Obviously, some of them do have quite a bit of funding behind them. And I was seen earlier, I'm out here, you know, I see you and the family working on signs, doing it yourself, putting it up, um, you know, just truly working right here on the ranch. So, I mean, you know, how do you plan 
you know, to combat and help offset the fact that, you know, some of these other candidates you're going against have quite a bit of funding behind them. Well, we're just using whatever means we have and whatever funds that we can obtain to, to do what we can. We have uh, received enough funds to buy some signs and, and yeah, we have to do some of the manual labor of putting them up. Um, and we got lots of volunteers, lots of help. Uh, we're utilizing the web uh, for inter, uh, advertisements and so forth there, uh, turning people to our website. And of course, word of mouth, and of course, uh, the experiences that we have been through and the news that we have received before has, has created some name recognition and notoriety that that otherwise, you know, that perhaps Adam Laxalt and Steve Sislek don't have. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we're going to be all right there. Let's go through these gates, and maybe kind of show the field off a little bit. Cool. We just we just planted and irrigated. <laughs> So we've uh, stepped out a little more, a little farther off the ranch here, guys. We are, see, way out in the rural part. Lots of open land, very beautiful, very green. And we're chilling by the sunflowers now. That's where we're hanging out at. So, so let's say, um, you know, let's do this. Let's say uh, for you, you become governor of Nevada and, you know, first day in office, what are the first things that you would want to take care of that you would want to work on in terms of legislation immediately? If you had to name just a couple things. Well, you know, we can, we kind of talked about some of those main purposes already, but we're definitely going to figure out this uh, land ownership issue, mm -hmm. and it will be in favor of Nevada and Nevada's people. Okay. Okay, the Constitution simply does not allow for federal government to own land within an admitted state of the Union, except for the express purposes in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, and Nevada has to stand up and put their foot down and be the state that they are mm -hmm. and and not be treated as a territory any longer and so that will be first on the list okay now for you you're obviously very big on the united states constitution and of course our nevada state constitution as well yes. you know is this something that's always been near and dear to your heart you know having such respect for the our country's constitution as you said ever since you're a child or is this more as you've gotten older and through some of the things you've been through legally, you became more and more involved with learning our Constitution and how it actually applies to everyday citizens. Well, with anything, it's a, it's a learning process. Uh, you know, I did start learning this when I was young, but, uh, you know, as I have grown and through my adulthood, I've learned more and more in greater detail and understanding of the Constitution. I've read more books, more more history and and so it's it's been a work in progress mm -hmm. so. okay well i think that's going to pretty much wrap it up for us here it came out the uh, bundy family was gracious enough to let me come uh, out here on their property and do an interview so i appreciate them responding to me appreciate them having me and if you guys want any more information about mr bundy here and his campaign where can people find you i'll put the uh, links and stuff in the description down below please go to governorbundy.com that's my web page and you should be able to uh, see most uh, of my issues there, um, my principles and precepts. You can also contact us through there. You can volunteer, you can donate, you can become part of my team to help uh, move this election along. Um, so please visit my website at governorbundy.com. Cool. Thank you guys. Any other last words you'd like to say, Mr. Bundy, before we go? Yes. Please study the Constitution and understand for yourself what is right and what is wrong, what the proper form of government is supposed to be. Our founding fathers were wise men and they set up a system of government that's supposed to maintain our freedom. Please learn about it. You cannot expect to be free if you are ignorant. Our founding fathers made that clear to us that this form of government um, is, is only sufficient for people who understand uh, certain key principles. And so please learn. Please be educated. Thank you.